In this video, we'll be looking at how Test Modeler can be integrated into your CI CD pipeline to help accelerate your CI CD processes. We're going to be using Test Modeler to scan the application and automatically create page objects inside our automation framework hosted in Git. We're then going to go through and build a model of the application, generate coverage focused test cases, and finally publish automation and the associated automation code automatically back into our automation framework. But we'll be using Jenkins as our CI CD engine. As soon as any tests are published, they will be run through a Jenkins pipeline. In this case, we'll be running Selenium code. Whenever an automation engineer comes in and adjusts our framework or edits our page objects, we'll automatically be scanning the automation code and updating this code inside Test Modeler where we can inspect the impacted changes and also update any models which have been impacted. Firstly, let's scan the application. In this demo, we're going to be automating a sign up registration form. What we're going to do here is come into our Chrome extension and we're going to come through and we're going to scan the application here to select and identify what objects we want to automate in our application. We'll see here we've scanned the inputs and a button here and they have turned red. And what we'll now do is hit the stop button here to stop scanning and upload these into Test Modeler. Now we'll see here the page object has been uploaded successfully. If we come in here and take a look in Test Modeler in our modules folder, what we'll see is that we have some page objects here that have been created. And what this has done is it has scanned the page, brought out various identifiers for extracting these elements. And it's also created a module here that we can interact with the page from. If we come into our GitHub project, which is where our automation is being stored, and we do a refresh here, what we'll see is that we have a new commit that has taken place. And if we open up that commit, what we'll see in here is all the code that was also generated via Test Modeler for this particular page object. Here we've selected to create our page objects in Java, although they could be Python, C Sharp, JavaScript, or many other languages. And we'll see here all the associated code that was generated for entering first names, last names, emails, entering the password and clicking the create an account button. Now we have a page object created, we're going to create a model inside Test Modeler. And that model is going to be for the registration screen. So we'll create a new model here and we'll open this up. Now the first thing we're going to do here is add a start block to the canvas. And we're then going to navigate on the right hand side to the page object which we just created, which was our create customer account. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is go to the URL. We're then going to enter a first name. We're then going to enter a last name. We'll then enter an email address. We'll then enter a password. And then what we'll do is we'll click the create an account button. Now, if I go through the topmost route here where I enter a URL, a positive first name, a positive last name, a positive email, a positive password and click create an account, I should end up successful with a new registration. And if I drop off at any of these other points, I should end up with some kind of error message or perhaps in some kind of error state. And this is where I could overlay some assertions. So we'll just connect these up. Now, what happened here is as I went through and I was building my model and importing my functions from my page object, it was splitting it for me into different equivalence classes here. So what you'll see is that when I was performing actions like enter first name, it split it for me into the classes valid first name, empty first name, and invalid first name. And if we look under these blocks, what you'll see is that there's associated test data like an empty first name, we're assigning to the first name, an invalid first name, and if we look at the valid first name, what you'll see here is that it's had the intelligence to map that to one of our synthetic data generation functions for generating first names. And you'll see here we've got a whole world of functions for generating different data attributes. And this has happened across the whole model as we've gone through importing our various components. But what we should end up with here is a model which represents, in this case, our registration process and the various scenarios we can go through that registration screen.
Now we have a model, we can create some test cases. So what we're going to do is come into the test generation tab here and hit the generate button. Now what this is going to do is it's going to go away and generate the minimum number of tests or paths here to cover every single edge in the model. And what we'll see on the right hand side is we have eight paths here. And if I flick through these paths, you'll see the different deviations they're covering through the model. Each of these paths represents a test case for the application. Now we can go very deep into how we're generating these tests and we can come into a coverage profile here and we can start to dictate the level that we want to be testing this component as. We can select low, medium, high or exhaustive levels of coverage as well as applying specific coverage levels to certain components of the model to explode our testing on specific areas. Now that we have our test cases generated, we can generate the associated automation code. So we'll come in here, hit generate automation, and we're going to select here to generate code. Now what that is going to do is go away and spin up our code generation engine, generate the associated automation scenarios, and publish these into our automation framework in Git. What we'll see is that we have a new commit here. And if I open this one up, what we'll see is that we've got the associated automation code that has been generated here for each of our paths along with the appropriate test data embedded inside our functions here that are being called. Now if we come into Jenkins here what we will see is that we have a new job that has been triggered as part of this code that has now been committed and what this is going to be doing is going away and executing our automation tests. So we'll see here our tests are now running and going through. Now we'll see here our tests have run, all of them passed. If I come back into Test Modeler here and we go to the results view, what we'll see here is those results have been logged. We've got eight passes and zero failures for this particular run ID that we've executed. We can also see the duration and each of the paths that were run. And if we come back into the model here and we just do a refresh on our test cases, what we'll see is that we also have the associated run results overlaid on top of each path that have been synchronized as part of our automation running in our CI-CD process. Now what we've done here is we've just loaded up our automation framework into IntelliJ on our local IDE. And what we're going to do here now is we're going to make a couple of changes. Now the first change we're going to make is we are going to change the definition for our enter first name, which is now going to take a prefix as so. What we'll also do here now is also remove the need for a password to be entered. So we'll remove that function from our library. What we've essentially done here is made two changes to our page objects. We've changed the definition of one of our functions and we've also removed the ability for one of our functions to be consumed. What we'll do now is we'll come into git, we'll do a new commit, and we'll push these up to the origin. Now if we come back into Test Modeler here and we go to our models view, what we'll see now is one of our models requires our attention. And we can click here to view the errors and the models that have been impacted. Now we'll open up this registration flow. And what we'll do here is we'll take a look. So we're just going to hit the validate button. And what we'll see here is that we've got a couple of errors. The first set of errors is because our password enter password module does not exist anymore. To update this, all we're going to do is we're just going to delete this. So our model no longer needs a password available. And we'll just connect these up. The other error we've got here is because of a parameter mismatch. So what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll just update our enter first name. And we'll give a prefix mister. So we'll just update our model here with the changes that have been made. And we'll 
save this as so. And we'll see here our model is now valid. We'll come in here, save our model. We'll do a regenerate. And now we'll go off and regenerate our automation. If we come back into Git here and come back into our project, what we'll see is that we have a new commit that's been made. And this contains our updated automation code with our updated functions. This is now ready to be executed in our Jenkins CI process. This will now be picked up and executed in our Jenkins CI process. Thanks for watching this video. Any questions, please email james.walker at curiosity.software.